Oh, great. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today and to all of you at home. Uh, we're here today to talk a little bit about the Paul Taylor uh, Dance Company, which is one of the leading modern dance companies here in the United States, uh, led by uh, an incredible choreographer, uh, Mr. Paul Taylor. Uh, Paul was born in 1930, uh, and he started dancing actually at uh, Syracuse University, where he's discovered by Martha Graham, uh, another modern dance pioneer. Uh, and then he started his own company in 1954 at the age of 24 years old and has been making dance ever since. So um, we're actually here today with uh, Lila York, a, a alumna of the Taylor Company and a choreographer this season. Uh, Larry Kegwin, also another choreographer on the program. And then Aaron and Robert, who are two dancers with uh, the company. So uh, thank you so much for being here today with uh, AWOL Build. Um, why don't we first start uh, talking a little bit about um, kind of Paul Taylor, his movement uh, aesthetic, and how you guys, as choreographers, both of you, uh, came to Paul's work in the first place. So why don't we start with you, Lila? Uh, well, I was a member of the company back in the 70s and 80s, so it's 30 years ago. But I spent I was I spent really the majority of my dance career there, so that's really how I move. And it's my movement style as a choreographer has evolved since then, but there's still like a base there. Great. And Larry, when was your first encounter with Paul Taylor? Uh, probably back in about 1992 when I was a student at Hofstra University and I really just watched it through the lens of a student and I completely admired Paul's work and I definitely admired the athleticism and drama and theatricality of these extraordinary dancers. And what about the two of you? When, when did you guys first uh, hear about Paul's work and what inspired you to join his company? Um, I think I was mostly like heavily exposed to it in college um, and I had some teachers that sort of encouraged me to seek out his um, intensives and stuff that they have for students and once I did I just totally fell in love. It was, felt so delicious on my body. I didn't want to dance for anybody else. Pretty much the same. I discovered I had my first intensive, Paul Taylor intensive, after right after college and um, it just like sunk into my bones. It felt perfect. So. It's like, that's the company. And luckily, I got in. <laughs> Great. Well, um, these incredible dancers will be uh, performing at the David Koch Theater uh, March 7th through 26th. So they have a long run. Um, every night of, the, uh, of their season, you get to go and you get to see three new ballets, or three ballets every night. Um, it's different every night. So I think all in all, you guys perform about 21 works. Uh, in that time period. So it's really a great way to see a wide range of Paul's styles. Um, I think as a choreographer, for me, when I was first uh, seeing his work was how human uh, Paul's work was. He really, um, unlike uh, you know many other choreographers, one of his strengths is really capturing the, the human condition, whether that's war or peace or love, humor, um, all different emotions and situations, but his work is is very human and, and very easy to relate to, and I think will be interesting to see as, as time goes on. But um, now, Lila, since you're a, a former dancer with, with uh, Paul Taylor and now coming back to the company to make new work, um, how has the company changed in, since your time there, and um, what are some things that are maybe the same? Um, well, Paul Taylor's a very unpredictable choreographer, and it's amazing. Um, I, I, I can't really say his work has evolved in a single direction because his, that direction is so unpredictable. You never really know what he's going to do next. Um, I think the main difference I see now, because the actual operation of the company and rehearsal process is really the same, but um, the repertory is so much bigger now. It's vast. And the dancers have to keep many more dances at performance level than we did. For instance, we had maybe 12 dances in a season that we did. And the dancers, as you just said, now this season performing 21. So for a company of 16 dancers, it's a lot. Did it, did it feel like um, comfortable to you coming back to Paul Taylor and working with um, other dancers who are so familiar with his style like you were? Were there things that you were able to say, oh, do this like that, and, and they got it immediately just because you were speaking the same language? Yeah, exactly, exactly. There's a DNA commonality there that's really wonderful for, for me, not having to 
break things down and explain necessarily how to execute it because it's really in their it's in their uh, genes. <laughs> and, and now, what is this piece that you've created um, for the company this season? Can you tell me a little bit more about what what inspired you and what it's about? Um, it's called Continuum, and um, it's about. Um, a society that's in conflict that evolves into a society at peace. So, <laughs> wishful thinking. Yes, wishful thinking. Great. Um, and and for you, the dancers, uh, what was it like working with um, somebody that you might have watched videos of and learned parts from um, as somebody who has gone through uh, many of these dances before? What was it like working with somebody um, who has gone through the same process that you guys have? Um, actually, it's interesting that you say that because Lila is a rather petite woman and I'm one of the more petite women in the company, so I've actually learned many of Lila's parts from videos of Lila dancing. Um, one of the first big solos that I got to do was Diggity, which was a dance that was made on her. Um, so, yeah, it's like, you know, it's, it's a nice way to sort of like bring things back around. She's not somebody that we've gotten to spend a lot of time with in the studio until now. Um, and, you know, her work is so, um, it's like Paul on speed a little bit, this um, piece, because it's so sprightly and so dynamic. And there, I mean, she's fit more steps into a dance than Paul has. In recent years, he hasn't made things as dense as this. Um, and it's really fun. It's a really big challenge for us, but we really like it a lot. It must be interesting to be able to see a continuation of the same um, kind of artistic idea, but a different person, you know, through the lens of a different person who also knows it very intimately. So um, I think that's that's very cool. Do, have you given her any tips for any of the roles that she's done? Are you are you saying, well, well, when I did it, I I did this a little bit differently? No, I actually haven't. And you know, sometimes the dances evolve. Um, they all do. They all do, and I see differences really in all, in all the repertory because the dancers bring themselves into the dances. You know, it's not it's not this static thing. It's something that evolves and grows over time, and it's going to change with each dancer who does it. So it's not really wise for the old guard to step in and say, "I did it this way." <laughs> I think I think each dancer has to really bring themselves into it. I think that's part of the exciting thing to watch live dance is that you know every generation we get to see another group of, of people interpret something and breathe new life into to work. And I think that's what makes dance sort of continue uh, in, in the way that it has. So um, I'd, I'd also love to hear uh, from Larry too. Now you have your own company um, outside of Paul Taylor. So what was it like coming in here and working with dancers who you don't normally work with, um, you know, who, who might have a different, um, vocabulary than your sort of home company of dancers who are used to working with you every day. What was that process like? You know, uh, lucky for me, I like the new. I love walking into a brand new studio as a blank canvas and meeting new dancers. Um, I find it very inspiring trying to discover and excavate uh, their personalities. So that challenge I really welcomed. And coincidentally, my, my vocabulary, how I like to move is very physical athletic and hopefully theatrical with a sense of wit. And these dancers really rose to that occasion. It, my, my language um, was an easy fit on them, at least from my eyes. And now this, this new piece you've created uh, was very much inspired by New York City and kind of, I mean, as we look out into through these glass windows, the, the streets uh, right outside the AOL Build studio. Um, a lot of other choreographers, George Balanchine, Jerome Robbins, have uh, used um, New York City as an inspiration, the, the energy here. Um, what, what is your New York City like? What should we expect from your version of New York? Well, the title alone, Rush Hour, so you can expect speed and drama and frustration and anxiety and all of that that comes with being in the middle of New York City Rush Hour. But the work was originally inspired by a sculpture uh, by this artist, George Siegel, that I saw at a museum. And it was like five leaning forward um, pedestrians. And they, they sort of expressed hope for me. And so the undercurrent for me of the work is that of hope. And you know, racing through the day with all these emotions that we go through that hopefully we're aspiring to something. And we do, we live in this city that really is about aspiration. And uh, so this is obviously um, 
uh, commissions, these are both commissions on top of the regular Paul Taylor repertory that you dancers uh, are, are rehearsing and touring all over the world. Um, what was it like working with um, these two choreographers this season and um, how does that supplement your own uh, exploration of yourselves in addition to the, the Taylor repertory? Um, well, I know for me, I w I'm gonna turn 44 in a couple in a month, and I remember thinking <clears throat> when we were getting the commissions, I was like, "You gotta be kidding me!" <laughs> like I'm, I'm just settled into this. Um, so Larry was actually the first one we worked with, and I just remember being nervous and if if I was going to be able to dance at all differently than a tailor dancer, and if I was going to be asked to do things that I couldn't do anymore or wasn't comfortable doing or anything, because it was just a, I hadn't danced with anyone else or in a different style for nearly 20 years um, and people keep saying language and I think like Lila is a different dialect of the same language Larry was sort of a different language in a way and then Doug is like an alien came down and <laughs> spoke to me um, and you just hope that you can understand what their hand gestures mean um, so it, it was cool though it was like it, to, to start out I was admittedly sort of reticent about exploring and trying something new after so long when I feel like my career is sort of like ebbing. And, um, and so it was a great experience though and I feel like I've learned so much about my dancing and, and my openness with working with all three of, of the choreographers. So it's been a great experience. I just wanna point out that I'm 44, so welcome. <laughs> And this is the difference between a choreographer that sits all day and 15, 20 pounds lighter is the dancer that dances all day. Um, so, so what is what is that? Um, you know, 44. What does that mean to a dancer? And and what are you sort of? Um, how how does this feel uh, to be able to explore new work at this point in your career? I mean, are you excited by this? Is this is this scary to you? And uh, you know, what what else are you looking forward to? It it was. It was interesting. I mean, like I said, Larry was the first, and I just felt vulnerable again for the first time. And because I was, I'm admittedly a sort of uber confident in Taylor work now. Like I feel like I know what I'm doing, and so to have someone come in and all of a sudden you don't know what you're doing at all. Um, when we did, speaking of being 44, when we did Doug's work after we all walked out the first week, it's a mix of um, break dancing, capoeira, modern dance. We were all could barely walk. It was, I mean, from the 30 year olds to the, to the older people. So, um, <laughs> but um, I think the other big thing too is for me, um, Larry always used to say this thing in a different regard. He'd say, practice the law of detachment where he would create something and then he'd throw it away. So don't get attached to something or, but I think for me that factors more into, especially with his work and, and Doug's work is that I'm never gonna do it the way Larry did it because he's he it's his body and he moves a certain way that I can't I can't recreate and especially Doug's work with all the hip hop and break dancing and whatever I mean talk about looking like you're at a club horrible anyways um, that's a side story so I practice the law of detachment and say I'm going to do it the way the best I can and and that's what I have to be satisfied with great. Um, so as we're adding um, these sort of new choreographers, new pieces uh, to your repertory, uh, I know that Paul is now in his 80s um, and he's starting to think about the future, always a forward-thinking person, um, and creating his Paul Taylor American Modern Dance, which uh, in many ways will hope to be a home to uh, modern dance, which is a uniquely American art form, um, in the same way modeled after George Balanchine's vision of New York City Ballet, which is there's a core repertory of Balanchine's works, but then it's a living incubator for contemporary artists in that field. So I think now we've had a couple seasons at Lincoln Center. Um, this is this program is a few years in and, and the company is starting to get um, new works by contemporary choreographers now. Um, I'd love to kind of go down and, and hear each of your um, reactions to what Paul has given to you personally and how your work uh, continues to push his legacy forward. And maybe we'll start with you, Lila, since you've been with the company the longest. Yeah. Um, well, uh, you know, when I first retired from dancing, I staged a lot of Paul's work for other companies. 
And that process of just studying the dances and learning all the roles and seeing, seeing the dances from his perspective, not mine, not as, not as a dancer, but as the, from the eyesight of the choreographer, was just revelatory to really understand how he put these dances together because they're so surprising. And, you know, there's no, um, there's no way you can teach innovation in the way. Paul's a major innovator in that every dance has its own lexicon, its own language, and, um, and just, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know that anyone but a choreographer could understand how difficult it is to create movement you've never seen before, something brand new. And he was able to do that in, in, in every dance, and that's really not teachable. But the craft is teachable, and so I think I make dances about things that concern me and are like rumbling around in my in my brain. But from the standpoint of craft, I think I learned so much from him and from working on his on his work for so long. Great. What about you, Larry? I'll be honest. The the one thing I wanted when I graduated college was to dance for Paul Taylor, and guess what? I didn't get the gig, but I got the gift of creating on the company, which was incredible, and I got the gift of observing Paul's work for decades, really. Not only observing the span and the variety of his work, but also enjoying generations of dancers enjoying his work, and Paul's work has such a spectrum from dramatic to witty to um, powerful exuberant, and so he's given me the gift to um, enjoy all of that. Great, we'd, we'd also love to hear from the dancers and, and uh, what it's like doing Paul's work, um, but also would love to hear more about your efforts to continue uh, his legacy through new initiatives like Taylor Next um, and continuing on your touring and, and presenting at Lincoln Center. I mean, you know, for me, I was so lucky to get into the company straight out of college. So my whole career has been with um, Paul, which is amazing. Um, and one of the reasons da dancers, I think, stay dancing for him for so long is because how varied his work is. So it feels like you're dancing for you know, eight different choreographers, but it's only one. And there are dances, you know, I've been dancing for the company for over 12 years, and there's still roles that I would just die to do, you know, and that I haven't gotten an opportunity yet to do, because there's so many dances that we just can't, like, cycle through them all fast enough. Um, so, like, there's still something to look forward to, which is so awesome. And then now we've layered on top of that already bountiful you know, legacy that he has, this new initiative with Paul Taylor's American Modern Dance, and that we get to do all of this, you know, other choreographers, which is something that I sort of never thought I would be able to do because I love dancing for Paul so much. I had planned to dance out my days at Paul, with Paul, and not ever sort of like go on to perform anyone else's work. So to be able to do that in the umbrella of Paul Taylor is just such an amazing gift, yeah. Um, he's given me a career. <laughs> I mean, yeah. he's allowed me to do what very, very few people get to do, and that is their passion is their job. I get to go to work and do what I love to do and make money. I mean, it's the greatest gift you can have, and especially in the arts, it's so hard. Um, and he's allowed me to explore the entire range of physical and emotional um, feelings. I, I get to dance dark and contorted and beautiful and I get to feel that way and I get to be characters and I get to, it's, it's amazing. Um, so that's his biggest gift. And I will say, I'm going to speak for them but or about them, but I think one of the things that makes Larry and Lila's work so successful to me is that they take, whether on purpose or not, a book out of Paul's playbook where they use their choreographic tools so well. Um, spatial patterns, cannons, all that thing that the eye just loves. Like you love watching, seeing a mountain or seeing the ocean. You just like seeing these patterns. It works for the brain and they know how to manipulate those things. And that's why on top of the movement and on top of the use of the music and on top of the everything else, they use their tools very well. And that's such a big Paul thing um, is his way he forms his dances and they also have that knack and 
so that was nice to work with. <laughs> Great. Looking forward to seeing more that uh, March 7th through 26th. Um, I'd like to open the floor up to our audience here in the studio uh, to see if any of you guys have questions for um, our folks today. Hey, guys. Thank you for being here. Uh, how important is music choice for so song choices for a particular dance? Why don't we, uh, Larry, why don't we, we you, you feel this one. Oh, my gosh. It's... it's Major, it's it's everything really, um, and I'll tell you in the process that I was working on with these dancers, I didn't have music chosen for a good three weeks, or it was being freshly composed, and uh, it's challenging not having the work the the music you're working with. But um, I really think it's like one of the first entry points for the audience is certainly the costuming and the lights, but it's the music, right? It gives you the the tone of of the work. Wait, Great. I will say this, choreograph, he choreographed an entire long section in eights, and then when we got the music, it was in sevens. So that took, that took a day or two to kind of <laughs> re-wrangle us. That was fun. <laughs> I, but I think that's part, of the, that's part of the creative process always. It's, it's trying to see what works and fitting things together and throwing things out that doesn't work. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. What about you, Lila? How, how's your relationship with music? Um, it's the primary element, I mean, it really is. Um, I n usually know the arc of a dance that I want to make. I know where I want it to start and where I want it to end. And I look for music that gives me that flow, start, that starts here and goes here, and maybe does something else in the middle. <laughs> but. The idea comes first, and then I have to find music that will work for that idea. But then once I have the score, I'm pretty religious about, about my work with it. I don't ignore it ever. Great. I was just remembering in the studio, um, I'd always make movement not to music. And then I'd turn to the dancers and say, everything's better with music. Yeah. <laughs> hey. So. I know there's a number of other dance companies in New York, like Alvin Ailey and Mark Morris. I was wondering if you've had uh, studied or uh, worked with any of those, and is there a difference, uh, or like how big of a difference is it between them? Oh, I think with all the dance companies, they're all as different as human beings are different, right? So it's an expression of that artist as a choreographer, you know, making a dance. So they're they're as varied as the human population, and I. I've, had the opportunity of making a dance on the Martha Graham Dance Company, and it was attached to a famous work of hers called Lamentation, and it was a variation on that theme, and, and the dancers um, were exquisite, but I'll, I'll be honest, I think dancers across the world, no matter what medium they're in, tap, jazz, ballet, whatever it is, they're great, you know, so dancers are always remaining the same for me. Great. Hey guys, uh, my question is for all of you. Um, what made you, there's some, like you said, there's so many um, dance companies in New York City and around the world. What made you guys want to work for Paul Taylor? Why don't, we, uh, why don't we start down here with Lila, since you've got the longest history. What, what made you want to work with Paul Taylor? What made me want to work with Paul Taylor? Um, I took an audition. I'd been studying Graham in, in New York and ballet, and I took an audition for Paul, and I felt like this is what I've been dancing my whole life. It was just felt like the ideal fit for my body and how I moved and what I could do and what I couldn't do. And um, I, I knew almost and like immediately, you know, in the first hour, I said, ah, this is it. Um, and I suspect a lot of dancers in the company feel that way. It's very organic. What he does is so organic. It just, you know, it feels right on your muscles. There's no, you don't fight with the movement. You go with it, it flows. Pass. <laughs> um, totally, exactly what Lila said, basically. Um, although, now I'm going to lose my train of thought with that. But, oh, it's interesting because many dancers, like, there is something very specific about 
the way a tailor dancer moves. Um, and it, I think he, Paul sort of believes it takes us like a full two years of being in the company before you really kind of get that under your belt. And it's really been, it's interesting to watch when a new dancer comes in, they look, I don't, maybe not to your eye, but to like our eye, it's like this person looks a little awkward. They're not quite getting all the transitions, right? And Lila probably has that experience like, Many ballet companies and other modern dance companies commission Paul's works and perform his works, and they look different. They're never, they never look like they do on the Taylor Company. They're beautiful. It's just there's something very like it's like a dialect in a language or something that like the Taylor Company speaks it this way, and it's hard. It takes many years to sort of like master that. Um, that accent or something and get that sort of like meaty groundedness and like the full twist of the back. And um, so it's it's cool. It's cool to see his work on other companies and it's cool to see a dancer who gets hired and like sort of as they like just really embody it. And you know, it happened to all of us over time too. You don't see it as much on yourself, but it's a cool thing, yeah. I mean, I can't say it any better. It's very organic. It makes you, f after I took that intensive, not only did it feel right in my body, but the pieces I got to learn in that intensive ran the gamut. We learned Last Look, which is extremely dark and violent. We learned Airs, which is beautiful and sort of balletic. And um, seeing how that ran the gamut and physically and emotionally, is, was, it was a no-brainer for me. Great. Well, uh, thank you so much for joining us today here at AOL Build, and thank you for our audience here today. Uh, the Paul Taylor Dance Company runs March 7th through 26th, and actually I heard that they're opening night on the 7th. They're giving away $5 tickets. Um, so you can go to the Paul Taylor Dance Company's website for more information, and um, thank you again for joining us.